Okay guys, so we are back again today working on this beautiful Singer 401A Slanomatic sewing machine. Um, now this is part two of this series and in part one um, we went ahead and figured out why I was having trouble with this stitch selector mechanism. I uh, was uh, not able to get from all the way to I and J and it was locked out in that position and not really working all through all the stitches properly. So it was kind of weird, kind of a strange deal. I figured out that um, there was some parts in here that were installed backwards and that cascaded into several other problems that uh, were making it not work properly. So we figured all that out in part one and uh, check that out if you have not seen it yet just so you can get up to speed. And so I think that everything that was broken or not working properly is is great now. So uh, my goal on this is to bring it home from the thrift, sh the thrift shop and um, get it uh, up and running and, and know that everything fixed on it and then give it a good maintenance run and get it back in service. So. Um, that hopefully, you know, unless I run into some other strange thing today, uh, I should be able to just pull some basic standard maintenance, which would be cleaning, oiling, and greasing everything uh, in the top and in the bottom and in the left side and in the right side. So uh, that ought to do it. Let's um, go ahead and get started uh, in the top. And um, so I will bring you guys in a little closer and we'll get going. Okay, so I think we're ready to get started here. I have the two screws out already for the top lid, so we'll just pop that off nice and easy. So nice how easy it is to get into this thing. And um, so the repair that I made in the part one of this video was right here. This stitch selector key right here was, was in backwards and upside down and wasn't right, and it made a bunch of different issues and problems. We fixed all that, so... Um, I am now just looking into this thing to, first of all, dust bunnies. Um, just going to really quickly run through this. I've got a hard bristle brush. There's not a lot of dust in this thing. Um, maybe just a teeny bit here. I'm not sure why it's so clean in here, but I'm not going to argue. <laughs> it's cool by me. But I just want to go through and collect whatever I can of the dust so that I can um, move on to oiling. It looks pretty nice in here. I'm super happy with how that is. Cool, oh, I'm sure I've seen a lot dirtier machines. Not sure if this was serviced before it was put away to not be used for a long time or if it was just always taken care of or just not used much. I'm not sure, but uh, that's really all I got to do with that. Uh, the next thing I've got here is I can see, I'm sure if you want to see a little bit of the light, I've got grease kind of splattered on the walls um, from the from the gears. I have a worm gear here and a uh, like a spiral gear down here for the main drive. I'm going to just take grease rag and clean up whatever's been splattering in here and you can see how dirty that is old grease that's accumulated Maybe I can get the rag on a screwdriver and kind of get down in here yeah you can see all that kind of junk that's been accumulating I don't mind seeing grease splattering, that just means it was greased, uh, which is great. I'm super happy with that. That looks pretty good, I'm happy with that. I'm um, just down into that in here. Oh, you know what I think I probably want to do is also, as I'm turning this wheel, I'm going to take and wipe this gear from the motor off and get whatever I can off of it and off of this clutch wheel as well where it interacts and now that is pretty clean very nice I'll do the same thing down here on this main gear drive I'll put the rag with the screwdriver and just kind of clean up the wall where it's been splattering yeah see all that junk okay and then again I would like to just lightly drag the rag across these gears just to get some of that old junk off. So 
if I go backwards, it doesn't catch as badly. But look at that. Just kind of junky on there. That looks good. I like that. Okay. And then take a clean part of the rag and I'm going to clean up some of these oil spots. Okay. Also, I'd like to get this cam stack a little bit cleaned up. Such an awesome piece of equipment. It's so neat. It's marvel of engineering that they've created here is just so neat. So I'll just turn this around and kind of get to all the parts and clean off everything I can reach. Okay, that seems to be a lot cleaner. Looking good in here. All right. Let me see what I can do with a Q-tip. Don't want to leave a lot of lint on these gears, but let's see what happens if I just take a little Q-tip and drag it on the main gear down here while I spin it. Oh yeah, look at all that black junk. Okay. Yeah, it's a little better. Let's see if I can get back down there with just a rag. Yeah, look at all that. I like to get as much of that old grease off of the gear as possible. It's getting better. Okay, I think that looks a lot better. Happy with that. Okay, cool. So uh, I've got the dust out, I've got the old grease out, and I've got the old oil uh, off the rods. So pretty happy with all that. I think that I can go ahead and start re-oiling and greasing some of this stuff. So um, I've got some sewing machine oil and I'm just going to find anything that moves and um, get some oil down it. I've got a couple oil spots here a little bit of oil on there. I've got a little port right here. Got a little more on the rod. Okay. Uh, this rod goes in and out. Let me just get a little drop on it where it goes in and out. Okay. Um, this guy here, this little paddle goes back and forth like this. I probably can drop a little oil in there and maybe a little bit down the face of the paddle where those cam fingers rub, rub on it. Okay. Um, a little bit around the little stacks here where they go up and down. Oh yeah, that's a lot nicer. Put a little bit on this little finger locking key. In and out all the grooves. That's feeling pretty good. Same thing over here. Up and down. Let's get a little oil on here. A little bit on this key. Have it lock in and out of all the little spots. Okay, let me take a little tissue paper and kind of dab up some of the excess. Don't need it all over the place. Okay, that's working really nicely. And I'll put a little bit on this cam follower. A little bit on the other cam follower. And then I think, how am I going to... Let me see, I'll put a little bit down here. I don't know if that's a spot or not, but... I think what I'm going to do here is... 
lace my finger with oil and then run the, gear, the cam gear around. I can see I'm getting shinier as it's coming around, so that seems to be up with fine, okay? That should be all the way around, and they look nice and shiny now, so that's super cool. Okay, this is going swimmingly. Um, okay, also, this little guy right here is kind of a cam. Looks like I could use a couple drops. Yep. And then the, that's a screw hole, but this looks like it might be a port for that main rod. Also one right here. And I think that's pretty much all the stuff that's moving in here. So, happy with that. Put the oil up, and I can move on to some grease. Now, a lot of times I will use uh, just some basic lightweight white lithium grease on, on gears for these things. But this machine, along with all the other 100 doodads that it came with at the thrift store, actually came with an original Singer motor lubricant tube. And it's like nearly full. So, and I've kind of squeezed it out and it's got good viscosity and it seems to be healthy still. So I'm going to go ahead and use it because that'll be cool. And I think about the best way I can think of to put this on is just again, get a bunch of this on my finger and then spread it onto this worm gear for the motor. I might be able to just stick some here on this clutch gear, spin it around. Just do a little bit more. Okay, that's feeling nice and lubricated. I like it, I like it, okay. And then I have the same situation down here. I should be able to just squeeze out some, I'm hoping. Under this gear here as I spin it. This thing's got a, <laughs> a little hole on the side of it. It's handy. All right, let me, sorry, let me see if I can just. Rub that on there. Okay. Squeezing grease out onto these gears. It's a little hard to get down into there. You can see why they kept this old thing in a plastic bag because it's got a little hole in the side and it's kind of coming out all over my hands. So that's cool. Just use that as the applicator. I'll just pull it out the side. Okay. And then I'm going to try 
Try to get on there one more time here. Definitely a booger to get to this gear. That's a good one. Okay, yes. Okay, I feel good about all that. Definitely cool. Okay. Put the lid back on my goopy bag and put it in the plastic sack it came in. Okay, cool. So, um, you know what, guys? I think that this, as far as I can tell, is good. It's running really smoothly by hand. And uh, everything I can see that's moving looks moist now with either grease or oil. And so I think we're in good shape. So I will uh, get us repositioned and we will move on to the next section. Okay, so here we are now at the side of the machine uh, with this front door for the uh, front assembly. Now, the cool thing about this guy is that once the top lid is off, you can just take this door and pop off the hinges. Um, that's pretty handy, giving us uh, more access to the inside of this guy. So, let me get my light here and take a closer look at what's going on. Okay, so this is a little dirtier than the top is, which I guess is to be expected. Yeah, there's dust bunnies in here and um, dust sticking to oil and all kinds of jazz. So let me get in here real quick and we'll just do a quick cleaning with my, with my lint brush and see what I can come up with here. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. Get back in here onto all this stuff. I'm kicking out all kinds of junk. Okay. Got a little piece of tissue here to collect this stuff off my brush. Okay, so okay, I like it, I like it. I think we're good there. Okay, a big pile of mess on my bed top here evidence as to all the stuff we pulled out of there. That's cool. I dig it. I dig it. Now what I want to do is just take my rag and get in here and just kind of clean up what I can off of these rods and whatnot. Get all the old oil off of them. Yep. Looks good. Anything that moves basically is going to get oil, and we don't want the old oil in there, so that looks a ton better. Okay, awesome. Happy with that. So, uh, all I got to do now is get my oiler out. And we are going to, uh, let's see what we got here. Hey, wake up, little guy. My dog's over there whimpering because he dreams puppy dreams, and when he does, he makes crazy noises. Okay, so uh, let's now find the top here. I don't know if hopefully you can see that. Let me bring you up. Just a little bit here. Okay. Um, in the top here, there are oil ports for these hinges. And so I'm going to just 
drop a little oil down into there and there's one back here as well and now these rods that go up and down right here I'm going to douse with a little bit of oil a little bit down here a little bit right here a little bit on the top of this plate and then I will rotate this stuff around and make sure I got it all Uh, looks like there's a port right here. Okay, that makes sense because that this pivots left and right. Okay, I'm not seeing anything else that's moving. Okay, um, and then I've got this guy. This foot drop and it could use a little bit of oil on where it goes down maybe catch a little bit of that excess if you get too much in here it'll just end up down on your work and you don't want that we just need a drop right oh I did a drop right there didn't I I think I got that one already yep we're good there so that looks good and I've got a little bit of excess I wanted to pick up here. And that looks good, man. This is great. Excellent piece of equipment. Super easy to maintain. You can move it, rotate with one finger. Very good. I think that all looks clean and all looks good. So, okay guys, I think that's good on this one. So I think what we'll do is we will move to the back or the right side and um, take a look at this clutch wheel. So I'll get you repositioned and we'll get onto that. Okay, so here we are back at the uh, right side, uh, which is the clutch wheel assembly. And um, I don't really anticipate there being anything wrong with this. It seems to be working really well. It, it uh, disengages and then you can tighten it back up and it re-engages. So I don't have any issue there, but um, Sometimes the, there's a buildup, uh, you know, of like uh, old oil and, and soot or whatever um, in, in there, in the cylinder. Uh, so I will see what does this look like. So I just take that set screw out and now I can remove this. Okay, that comes off. And then I've got this. This is a little different than the ones I've seen before. Try to remember which way it goes on there, just like that. If you just kind of take it off, whatever, however it went on, take it off exactly the way you see, or put it back on exactly the way you took it off, then you should be good to go. Yeah, I mean, you can see that. Look how dirty that is in there. Oh, look, that should slide right off. want to force it but there it is okay usually there's a belt on these things you know so you have to fight with that but okay not not too bad um, it's got some gunk in there this is where I freshly greased it you can see where it's nice and lubricated but this whole thing in here is just a little a little gunky so what I'm gonna do here is just take and wipe this stuff out and just kind of clean it up a little bit and make it look a little better in here and then on the back side now I've just got a little bit of old gunk in here as well so I'll, I'll take and clean it up a little bit I don't need to undo all of the old greasing I just did but I would like to get in here and just yeah look how that's cleaning up really nice just drag this along here okay yeah look how look at that gunk okay cool that's really good and then the other thing here is oh, look at that do you see how black that is let me get a piece of tissue paper on this this is the other reason why I take these off so if you take 
And if you look inside of here, inside of where this rides on this um, uh, main rod, if I go inside of his, this thing and just rotate it around a little bit, look at all that black gunk. And I already lost most of it on my finger, so I don't know. That's just like spent oil, friction stuff wearing out and wearing off. So I will also take and kind of clean off this housing in here and this rod. And then all that black goodness can come off of there and be good. So get my fingers cleaned up a little bit. And then what I'd like to do is um, I will take oil and I will put some oil across the top of this rod and just take my finger and roll it around on it. So it's lubed up and you can see more you know, mildly dirty stuff kind of coming off with that. Because that happened, I'm going to wipe this off now. Kind of maybe use that oil in as a cleaning. And I'll do it again. And drop a little oil across the top of this and roll it around. And look how much cleaner that is now on my finger. So that's good. And then additionally, what I will do is I will just take, what I'll do for ease, I'll just take oil along my finger here. And then I will just insert it into this housing here and spin it. So now uh, this union, it's nice and clean, this union between this clutch wheel and the main uh, power rod assembly is fully lubricated. So now it's all clean, it looks good. I can now stick this guy back on and Boom, snaps right in. You see how much easier that went in than it came out? Black junk on it. And see now, it is free moving. Very nice. So that's good. So now all I gotta do is just try to get this put back into place. I have this, um, this doodad here that will slide and lock back into place. And you see I was very careful not to move and rotate the motor. Um, while this was apart so that I knew that when I took and put this guy back on, it goes right back on in the same position. You're either going to get this on the right way or the wrong way. And if it's the wrong way, you'll have to take it apart and do it again. So I found the best way on these things is just don't let the motor rotate while you have it off. And then when you put it back on, it goes back on and makes sense. And I ended up in the same position like 11 o'clock with my screw hole. So I know that I have probably done that right. Can't tell you how many times I've <laughs> taken these things off and then had to re-put them back on because I got the I got it in backwards 180 degrees and it didn't work out. If you know, you know. All right, so we'll screw this lock screw back in and we can loosen it and it doesn't engage and I can tighten it and it engages. So. That's it, man. That is the clutch wheel. So let me get resituated again, and we will go to the next to the next shot. Okay, so moving right along here, things are going really well. Um, the next thing I want to take a look at will be the bobbin case area. So um, this should be pretty standard procedure. Um, I don't, not a lot of variance between these machines, I don't think, as far as this stuff goes. I did have to get into here once already, so I'm kind of a little bit more familiar with this area. When we, when we first brought the machine home from the thrift store, uh, before I could really do any testing on it uh, for my very first video that you hopefully have seen, um, <clears throat> it, uh, it was bound up with a bunch of thread and stuff. So um, I have been in here and done some cleaning, but uh, I'll show you kind of what it needs to happen with it and uh, get you going through the paces here. So first thing you do is slide this out, and it locks out here. Uh, so what you want to do is just pop this up and it'll slide out the front. The, uh, if you look at this lid, it has little slots um, on the sides. They kind of grab a hold of these little fingers right here. So you can slide them in this way and slide it out that way. And that, that works out pretty well. Now, the cool thing about this machine is this, uh, this uh, feed dog plate. Instead of the feed dogs dropping like most machines, um, this plate comes up. So I just put the feed dogs to the bottom and then just hit the lever over here 
and the feed dogs pop up and you can just pivot them out the plate out so piece of cake and it's pretty clean so that's pretty neat and that exposes all of this jazz in here um, now uh, the next thing I can do is I can take this little spring-loaded doodad right here and pull up on it and get it out of the way to see how it kind of snaps into place and snaps out of place uh, that pretty much gives you the ability to pull out the bobbin holder okay and so um, that pretty much exposes everything in here and you can see it rotating the hook assembly rotating so what I want to do is just get in here with my lint brush and make sure that everything is cool and clean here I see that look at all that the dust bunnies here that I'm I just pulled out of there this is a catch-all on all machines as far as junk it's kind of hard to get to all of it I could take it apart more but I really don't uh, think it's necessary for this session so I'm trying to get down in here and get whatever I can yeah, you see all those little little dust bunnies okay get my other hand here trying to get in this side pretty good down in here pretty good I can see a little bit in here yep and just try to get it to catch whatever you can get it to catch so you get it all cleaned up so I think that looks good okay so oil on this guy uh, most machines are live a lot of them I've seen and take the oil down the center I'm not sure if this is one but I'm gonna go ahead and drop a drop down the center and then this where this race is let me take my rag and just I'm gonna turn it while I hold my fingernail on it this race right here that interacts my pointer that interacts with the uh, bobbin holder Right in here, you could use oil as well. So I will just put a drop on that and then use my finger to just get that guy kind of lubricated up and she's good. That's all I'm gonna do in there. Just like that, super easy. This is all pretty clean and doesn't need to have anything done to it. So hopefully I can just slip this guy into place and then this guy should if I can get this all the way in place snap back into place and we're good she rotates freely and that oil I put in there is hopefully working out Okay, that's it. Piece of cake. So now all I have to do is take this plate back in. Let's make sure that the feed dogs are down all the way. And then we just slip this guy in here under one post. And then under the other one, boom, drop the lever. Make sure the feed dogs are free. Looks good. And then we can bring this guy in. From the front get it to hook into place here sometimes I can take a little guy here and pop this finger into place and she slides in okay that is that so that's the bobbin case in a nutshell and so uh, I'm happy with all that. That worked out really well. So I think that all that is left is the underside, and I can't wait to see what goodies await us down there. So um, I'll get you reset up, and we will get to it. 
Okay, so I think we're onto our last portion of this uh, machine, which is the bottom side. And this is another really super cool part um, aspect of this machine is that it has this plate on the bottom. It came in a table, so it has hinges on it and it can come in a sewing table like a normal sewing machine. But it also has this plate on the bottom and rubber feet on it um, so that you can use it uh, as a tabletop machine. Uh, that's just like super handy and super convenient and really uh, well thought engineering. So um, anyway, we need to get to the bottom of this. And once I take this plate off, it should give us access to all of the inner workings and the demons that uh, live uh, within. So let's get this thing unscrewed. It should just be a thumb screw here. And I can feel it loosening. And we will get in here and see what surprises await. Okay. That's good. And here we go. It's got a felt holder. Okay. That's a little dust bunny-ish. Take and wipe this down just a little bit. Ah, look at that. Just a light smearing here on the plate because all the oil and stuff catches on this thing. That's pretty gross. Okay, that's the plate out of the way. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. Raise you up just a little bit here. Okay. So, let me just see what we got here. Once I turn the wheel... Um, this is a lot like the, the Singer 201 with um, a set of gears here and a set of gears here. All metal, really nice. It doesn't look too bad. Everything is pretty cool under here. Um, there is a bunch of dust bunnies, so let me just go through here real quickly and catch all those. Oh yeah, look at that junk. Just get a nice firm brush in here and Try to get as much of this junk out of here as I can. Ugh. Crazy where this stuff lives. This is underneath the bobbin case, so there's quite a bit of junk up in there. I can get a bit of light on that deal there. You know, a lot of this is just the grease. The lint is sticking to the grease that's in there. Oh, shoot. I'm so sorry about that. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Wow, look at that. Ew. That's not good. Oh, yeah. That is dust bunny heaven there. Okay, very good. Glad we got in there because that doesn't look good. Okay, now what I want to do is take my grease rag and I'm just going to go around and give everything in here a bit of a wiping. Try to get all the old oil off of the rods and the moving parts. The housing looks pretty clean, not really. It's not, not that bad. Kind of cool, the motor is right here. It's vertically mounted like I thought it would be. And it looks like there's screws right here where you could get to the the brushes, I'm guessing, well, that's super handy as well because you don't have to take the motor out to service those. That's cool. Interesting thing about this machine is it came with a service receipt from a shop from, I'm guessing, about 1990 where they say that they replaced uh, the motor with a used motor. So I know that the motor, at least, is not original and has been replaced. So that's kind of cool. So I'm not 
dealing with an old motor. I could get in and um, tear this all apart, clean the brushes and the commutator. And I may do that, but uh, I don't know if I'll be to get to that today. If I was having any issues with the motor or if it was skipping or jumping or had dead spots, I would definitely tear into that for you guys today. But seeing that I'm not having any problems with it at all, I think it's probably best if I leave it alone for today. Okay, you can see all the black gunk and junk I'm getting off of everything here. Okay, cool. So what I think I want to do now, this all looks good. All the dust bunnies and all the junk out of there. Give it a quick look through with my light. Looks much better. I'm happy with all of that. Okay, so let me just get some oil in here. And basically anything that moves gets oil on the rods. I'm going to put a drop of oil where there's unions between metal on metal surfaces and spinning surfaces. There too. A little drop. This over here is rotating. This right here is rotating. Right here. Right here. Right here. Over here. Right there. for stuff that I haven't gotten. Maybe a little bit right here. And this is all looking really good. Super good. Okay, cool. I can put my oil away. And then what I can do is um, I think what I'm going to do is use my trusty white lithium grease on these gears. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to just put some here on this brush and then just lightly work it in to this gear set. It doesn't need a lot, just enough to keep it happy. And I'll give a little bit more. For the other side. And it'll work itself into both gears. Okay, throw that brush away. And then I'm going to take a tissue and just kind of clean up some of the excess here that I've created. We don't need a mess, we just need it on the gears. Look at that, perfect. Happy about that. Okay, that to me looks serviced. Um, so all I need to do now is put this lid back on and we will be there. So I'll stick this in here. Grab the felt washer. This is under kind of some, it's bent, has some kind of pressure. I don't know if that's from the factory or if it's been sat down weird or what's going on, but it's definitely under some pressure. Stick the 
the washer on, grab the nut, handy little thumb screw here, screw this guy in, and that's it. She is good to go. So awesome. I think that's it. So we went through all the different uh, aspects and, and doors and uh, gizmos and gears and levers and I think we've pretty much serviced it all out. So I'm super happy about this. I think the last thing we need to do is just give it a quick test run and make sure I haven't screwed anything up. So um, let me get this uh, all these panels put back on and upright and I will get a uh, bobbin threaded and um, a needle threaded on it and we'll just run a couple of uh, quick stitches on it and make sure that um, everything is good to go. So uh, let me get resituated and we'll move on. Okay guys, looks like we are ready to go here. Um, I went ahead and got a new spool of white thread put in and a uh, coordinating white uh, bobbin threaded as well. And I've got it all, um, all set up and ready to go. So all I want to do now is just do a quick test on this thing. Um, you can see one of my, uh, my first video on this when I brought it home from the thrift store. I went through all the paces and checked everything out and worked on it all. So um, you can check out that video if you want to see more in-depth running. But I just want to make sure that I haven't screwed anything up and that I can do a straight stitch and a zigzag and I can, you know, move around between my stitch selector and everything's good. So I have full range of motion uh, with my stitch selector on both sides and everything's good there. So uh, let's just start out real quickly and see if I can make a stitch on this thing. I just have a, a scrap piece of uh, black duck cloth here. My white thread should show up on it pretty well. We'll see how we did. Here we go. Okay. Not bad. Okay, very good. Um, come back the other way here. Not bad. Looks good. All right, let me check. Uh, if I remember right, the zigzag is one down and one up. B and K or B and L. Let's see if that does a zigzag. Indeed, it does. Let me slow it down a little bit. Make it wider. Okay. Hopefully, you can see that. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Let me just make sure we can do. Other stuff too. Raise the needle, go back to the middle. Let's just pick a random F and N. Okay, we'll see what that does. Let's make it finer. That's not bad. Okay. Okay. That's a neat little stitch. Let's try another one. We'll go D. Oh, let's try P. D and P. Here we go. Okay, that looks really good. Look at that, it's doing it. It's doing the thing. One more time. Let's try G, M, uh, G, L. Let's try G, M. See what that does. Okay, and then let's try, I don't know, um, let's do an E. Uh, I want to go all the way up to R, just to make sure I've got range of motion. Let's go up, change the modifier. Okay, and then final test. That looks, that's cool doing all these different things, okay. 
Final test. Can we go back and do a straight stitch now? A and K. Can we go back and straight stitch it? Here we go. Well, folks, I think we did it. <laughs> Not a bad little machine. I think it's it's doing the stitches better than it was. I think that alignment thing I had going on in the first part of this video uh, definitely was messing with the stitches because these, these look better than they did. Even the back looks neat. Okay, awesome. Well, super happy. I think we've run all the paces. I think I've gone through a full maintenance session on this and um, I think she's ready to get back in service. So I think we can finish this up. Okay guys, so I got it all back in the table and uh, ready to, to be used and have some fun with. I um, had a lot of fun bringing you along uh, with this journey and I'm super glad that it worked out and we got this thing all cleaned up and serviced and ready to go. So um, I think that it's gonna be a great addition to our uh, collection and I can't wait to try it out and get to know it. And um, I, I, like I said, I know that it's clear why you guys are so passionate about this machine and, and I'm, I'm really getting it now. It's, it's a really, really, really neat piece of equipment. So can't wait to do something cool with it. Hopefully in a, a video in the near future, maybe I'll uh, get to um, maybe make something cool with it. So we'll see. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but that I think that'll do it for this one. So please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And remember, when it comes to sewing machines, you can't ever have too many. See you next time.